Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for August 31st, 2023 to order. The time is now 7 p.m. Uh, at this time, I'd like to have, ask everybody to rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, A reminder, the meetings, as always, are recorded for audio and video. We ask that you please silence your cell phones so we do not disturb the flow of the meeting. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. And we'll move into the section of the meeting for approval of minutes and uh, expenses. The first is to approve the minutes of the July 22nd, 2023 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Aye. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the July 27th, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Aye. Okay. The minutes for the 26th workshop meeting is they're not done yet, so we're going to table that for the time being. And then we have the treasurer's report. Irene, do you have anything that you want to report? Uh, Uh, money market account into the savings account as we're having some of the bills from the uh, culverts roll in. So that is an agenda. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. so that's about it. Other than that, nothing else to report. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for August. Second. We'll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. At this time, I'll open up the floor for public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board, we ask that you please uh, not only sign in at the front of the room, but when you make your comment, please step up to the podium and speak clearly into the microphone. Uh, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. Uh, certainly. I guess, Al, you're going to go first, and then Dave, you can go next. Uh, <clears throat> Sharon Drive there, where Marianne. Al, what's your name? Huh? What's your name and your address? You just said my name. I'll refer to you. Thank you. Okay, am I allowed to speak? What? Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah. Uh, please got to make sure. <laughs> uh, the pipe that goes past Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, Marianne. Yeah. What the hell's her last name? Yeah. Marianne Kepley. Kep. That pipe there is not, not too long with it. No, all, so, I, all I need. So, the pipe that's there, that's in front of Marianne Kepley's house. Yeah, goes all the way back through uh, to the alley. It does not go all the way back through to the alley. There, there is no pipe that goes through the alley. Like we actually looked, um, Butch and I, Chuck. I don't know if you went and looked at it too or not, but is this Marion Drive? Yes, through? yeah, that yeah, that, that pipe. A, there's a pipe under the alley that dead ends. Yeah, it's, there, it's there's a, there's the start through. of a pipe, but it goes nowhere. No, you mean you're talking about? From one side of the road to the next? From 422 down toward Main Street along Marianne across Kepley's property, yeah, across but, the alley. But from the alley down to Marianne, if there, you look down in there, it looks not too big to see there. Are we so, talking about no, the same such pipe? Probably no. not. Okay. So that bit of pipe isn't getting replaced. What we're doing is we're putting up pickups along Marianne Drive between like Main Street and 422 to catch the water runoff. Because I looked at it and the engineer looked at it and you have, that's a, I forget how, how much square footage, but it's a, a decent amount of space that is draining into that section and it's being forced down that alley. And because yeah. it's it's relatively flat, it has nowhere to go but your yards. So if, if you go down there with the grader and put the dirt back up where it, it belongs, the water go right down to the drain. It's not that simple, Al. It does. No, it's, it's not that simple. Like I looked at it and Chuck looked at it. It's... It's more involved than simply grading it. It did before. How come it doesn't do enough? Because every time it rains, the dirt gets down. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah. 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 All right. That's good. Close enough. Let's do I have all that on video. So, so hey, if you're seeing something different, take a look. But, uh, but it, like you're seeing daylight through is the one that's. 
goes from Mary the side of Marion Drive back up to 422. From, from the from the alley where I'm at, all the way down to, to the drain. And it goes right along all along to uh, Marion Kemp. Yeah. 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 So let's but, take a look. Yeah. Why spend all that money to rip it off and put new pipes in there? Yeah. We have a bar company that can put a hose in there and wash everything out. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll let's take a look at it. Yeah, let's let's, yeah, let's defer. Let me know when you go there, and yeah. I'll be glad. Right after, right after the meeting, Al. Oh, we got we get. I'm sure somebody has a flashlight. Yeah. Let's okay. That's fine. Hear what you have to say. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want to see all this money spent that we got no money to fix the problem. No, we we don't want to spend money that we don't have to. But it was kind of the collective opinion of the engineer and myself and Butch when we looked at it that. It is not a simple regrading okay, matter. That's fine. I'll be there. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we talked about this drone last week, last month, right? Mm -hmm. Remember? Yep. So, how much money did we, did, did we spend on the drone plus all the rest of the equipment for fire company? For the fire, whatever that's for. I mean, I'd have to look, but we, it in the meeting yeah, I say it's in the meeting minutes and it's in, it's all budget items. All the stuff that has been purchased has been safety with the exception of the drone. Any of the other stuff that we have purchased has been things like reflectors, road cones, signage, uh, road closed barricades and things like that for the culverts. All of it has been standard function. The reason that we got the drone this year was a direct response to last year where we had several situations where there was a, a missing person situation and we had to wait for Quite regularly hours for that to get here. The other part of it is surveying damage that you can't exactly walk over mm -hmm. to. It's getting an aerial view and knowing exactly where you have to go and what you have to do. Because for the first time in something over 15 years, we had houses that flooded that applied for FEMA and PEMA. Um, not grants, but so what the, um, like the funding, so funding re reimbursement. That uh, um, I think one of the homeowners was able to get. So. This is something that we're way behind the eight ball when it comes to anything with emergency management. So, any fire equipment, we have a fire company that's real good fire company. Yeah, they, they respond to everything and they have all the equipment they need. They they so, don't have all the equipment they need though. Out, they'll they'll be the first ones to tell you that. Oh, well, maybe maybe not everything. Yeah, but when something happens, they're there on the dime. But they're a volunteer fire company out. Like, it don't matter what they what we need. Our people for the fire company. Out. That's another thing. Does that yeah. make it any better? Yeah. Right. That's that's, that's another a whole, discussion whole other for thing. Time. But in, huh? in yeah. the, that's a whole other huge discussion. But I'll, I'll boil it down to the simplest point for you. I'm just it's, saying this here so we don't keep spending money for shit that we don't need. Well, okay. I think fire protection is something that we you know. Need, Amy, so. I, I hear her say we ain't got the money to do this, no money to that. She started got saving money. Put it away and not spend the money for, for a drone. Okay. Noted, Al. Thank you. Thanks. If that drone comes to my yard, I want to know why it's there sure. before it gets there. Yeah, and that's part of the legal requirements of flying a, a registered drone is you have to notify so the if, property owners. If they ever decide to come over my yard or my neighborhood and don't notify anybody, they keep my family done because that's my airspace. Yeah, th thank you, Al. Right. Consult your, consult your attorney about your legal rights. Okay. Consult your attorney. You sent me a question. No, I don't. I don't need to answer questions. Consult your attorney if you have questions about your legal rights on an unidentified object. Two hundred and fifty feet up. Okay. If nothing gets there, that the those who call me say I'm going to be there to check some stuff out and not be notified. I don't know who's up there. Do you, have, who's any, do you have any other public comments relevant to tonight's meeting? What? Do you have any, any other public comments, comments relevant to tonight's meeting? Or are you finished? Do you have more comments, Al? Yeah, well, that's part of the meeting. Okay. We've given you your, your opportunity. Do you have anything else? Oh, that's another thing here. So I don't want to see flying around up there. So they might not let go. Okay, noted. Thank you, Al. Dave. Okay. David Randler, 
451 West Penn Avenue, Robazonia. I have the property over here on Schmaltz Road that's, um, he condemned it, for tearing it down. I was in the day today, saw Sue, picked up the demolition permit. Um, I did not pick up the building permit. Um, I'm confused on the issue date of the building permit. Um, I would like to know if the issue date is going to be when I pick it up um, mm -hmm. on there. The issue said, date is the date it was issued. That is well, printed I, on the I, I understand that's what you said, Sue, but I would like to know if that could be the date that it was picked up mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. yep. no, it's, yeah. Now, unfortunately, like we can we can connect it with Kraft, but the way my understanding well, of that works is when they issue it, they print it, and that's that's the date. Well, I, I understand, but can that be changed to um, to when you pick it up? I mean, can no, that be no, done? No. And the answer is, and why not? That's the date it was issued. Why why do you want to change to the date? Well, because I think it was issued one May. It's May. I told you. Well, I think it was May. Without looking, I don't know. I think it was May, so we're four months in, and it has to be started within six months. So we've got two months, two months. I understand that, so I'm not trying to be argumentative here. I'm, I'm trying to ask the board to make yeah. a change if that is possible, because I, two, we have two months to go, and then the permit is not valid anymore. Yeah. We've been trying to get the contract to get started on this, and six months it's not valid, and then I have 12 months to complete it, or the yeah. perm, then i got to renew the permit. Yeah. I'm trying to get this done. I you want it done, and so do I. Yeah, and so does the neighbor. So the other thing that has come up, Mr. Sadison didn't want anything to do with the property, the next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. He contacted me last night and asked if we could work something out because now he had gotten a hired hand mm -hmm. and now he needs a place to house that hired hand. And I said, I just went through all of this to get this torn down and um Got the drawings for the property he wants to consider putting a mobile home somewhere mm -hmm. in the township i said well you'd have to get a whole new permit i said i already have the permit to build a house i said i'm not going to get a two thousand dollar permit and then not going to use it i said unless you're going to pay for it which of course he wouldn't pay for it um so that's up in the air now if he needs a couple of days to consider, you know, what he wants to do a week or whatever. And, um, I mean, it would be the logical thing for him to get this property because it's, he has all the farmland around there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd be willing to work with him if he's interested in doing that. So again, that's why I'm here asking if we can change, I mean, what does it matter if it's May or if it's September one, Yeah, change so, the date. So Colin, it, I, we don't we don't tend to normally do that, but is that something maybe you get engaged with craft? I, I think generally speaking, is there a reason why because the contractor just wasn't ready to get going? He has other stuff on the books, and as you know, nobody has any help. So who's your who's your contract? Um, country group contract is going to do it. I mean, like, objectively speaking, I don't have any problem with it. I just don't know exactly how we. Well, go well, about I think at the, at the expiration of the term, that's the if the board approves it and authorizes the extension of the end of the term of the term, what's but, what's the time frame that you had from the contract but that's the other thing and sue said if we start to tear this down who said that doesn't constitute starting the construction of the building so if i tear it down yeah. that's the demolition <laughs> That yeah. has nothing to do with the construction. So if okay. we tear it down yeah. and I don't start construction, when, when, the when six months. Yeah, when, 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 you when, 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 when,
well, the permit. With, with craft being the, the codes and zoning enforcement for residential, would it be maybe prudent for us to authorize them to extend it without the usual incurrence of fees um, based on what they see as prudent? Of course. You, so you have a, you have a demolition permit right now? Or yes, he was in there. And, you, but, and you haven't gone and filled it? He has. He has. So you have, so you have, both, you have both. I didn't pick it up. It's in the office. Okay, okay. but, but you, were in, you were issued both at six, six months for both those permits. They both need to be accepted. No, we picked up the demolition permit. The demo, the demo isn't going to be a problem within the confines of the permit, correct? It's just the building. Okay. First, authorize the extension. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Problem. I mean. Colin and Chuck, they're having a hard time hearing you on the Zoom. Could you slide your microphones a little closer? But, but it, it, it's not the expiration of the permit, it's the starting of the construction that's the problem. If I don't start in the next two months, the permit is invalid. You must so start you, within six months or the permit's invalid and I got to start all over again. So no, pick up, we'll extend, we'll pick up the permit and contact Brad for an extension. Assuming the board will give you the blessing to endorse that or follow their procedure for the yeah, extension. So if, if I can propose something, Dave, pick up the permit all crafts, let them know what the situation is. They may offhandedly just be willing to work with you, but if not, when for next month's, we can put it as an agenda item. If you come back and say, I talked to craft, craft wants something from the board, we'll be happy to authorize a six month extension on your building permit. If that's if that's all they need to do that, that's well within, I think, our, our ability and our, our right. willingness to do. Right. Are you okay with that? Pick up the permit until the construction is ready to begin. Well, right. Unless you're going to say yes, you're going to extend extend it. Why should I spend twenty six hundred dollars well, if you're what, not going to extend it? What I'm saying to you is, we we are willing to authorize the extension. Like that's we're we you're come not, to, you can't do it tonight. Well, no. let's let's have you pick up the permit and talk to Kraft first. And if Kraft doesn't just say yeah, sure, that you didn't pick it up for a while, we know you've got a demolition permit pending. You obviously can't start building until it's demolished. They may just say, yeah, sure, here's an extra six months. Craft is very easy to work with. I've had other permit things personally that I've had where I got behind the eight ball. I, on I, I disagree with you on that. But okay. okay. But bottom line is the takeaway for you is pick up the permit. Once the permit is activated, you have the board's support on us saying, Craft, give Mr. Randler an extra six months on his building permit. That will officially, as, as long as there's action actually needed on our part, it'll be an agenda item for next month, and we can ratify it at that. Okay. All right. That's on the record. So yep. it's on the record of your blessing. It is. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Dan Klein, 14 Rosebush Court. Historic Stonecrop Village. And I'm not here tonight for Stonecrop Village. I'm here tonight as a taxpayer of Marion Township. And I was appalled at the condition of this happy ice skating rink that you folks put in for the use of the community. I brought my granddaughter here on August the 17th to play pickleball on a tennis court that's got two and a half inch cracks in it. it we couldn't even play on it. So I walked over to the what was supposed to be the ice skating rink. The lock was hanging on the fence with the key in it. Gate was wide open and that big piece of plastic 
that they wanted to put down, put water into to freeze the ice skate on August the 17th was still laying there, blown all over the place with nothing but mud and dirt on it. It was disgusting. And I'm quite upset that that's how my tax dollars are being used by this community. So the first, the first and foremost thing is other than the insurance, that was a community association thing that we, we were on board with, but the community association was the one that purchased the liner and, and did all of that. That's not, that wasn't taxpayer money. That, that okay. that. Um, with that said, uh, we'll have to work a little closer with the community association about uh, the care and maintenance. Cause that was one of the things that was a requirement was making sure that it stayed locked and secured when they, they were not using it. Um, so we'll maybe have some conversation with like Kelly and Lee and Don and everybody else that's involved in the community association about that. Cause I would personally like to see if we have a cold enough winter, get the, the liner back out and freeze the pond over and have people skate. I think that would be Absolutely. a neat thing, but we want to make sure, like you said, by the time August rolls around, it definitely shouldn't be there anymore. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it was disgusting. The mud that was on it, the dirt, the debris, free limbs, all of that. Mm. That was on top of the money that was spent for that. Okay. So it didn't come out of taxpayers' money. Yeah. But it was money that township that gave over to not necessarily they do no. they do a fair amount of fundraising like they do the car shows and yeah. things like that and they they do the, right. the concessions well, at the little that's games. how they choose to yeah. take care of their things then that's their choice yeah second part is what can we do about the tennis court what can it be converted into uh, you know well, there are people looking for pickleball courts and we actually we brought this up on on saturday that like I, never, oh, I know you weren't here, but it's funny you bring that up because Jim was that you were talking about pickleball. Um, that we yeah, actually it's, it's great exercise for not only middle aged people but seniors as well. Yeah, that we nobody really uses the tennis court for you tennis. Can't. It's um, got a two and a half inch crack the whole way down the center. Yeah, if you twist your ankle in there, you might as well forget it. Yeah, so probably not this year, obviously, but that was one of the things that we were discussing about next year's budget, that we usually have a, a rec, parks and rec line item. We're thinking about doing the ball field a slight bit different, so it's a little easier to maintain and a little less costly. It's more like a grass field than a ball field. Well, yeah, yeah the, the, the goal here is we're probably going to, without diverging too much, uh, do the baselines in yeah. the diamond text and then have it be grass the rest of the way so that it's a little easier to upkeep, there's less raking, et cetera, but through that discussion that came up about the tennis courts and the suggestion for turning them into pickleball because people are apparently playing pickleball all sorts of times now, yep. then that might be a better use for it than a, a tennis court. Yep. So that's that's kind of formulating around here to, to do a little refurbishment on that next year as part now, of the- You need the name of a good guy that puts in pickleball courts. I'll give you his name. Okay, yeah. please. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? Kelly. Five four one Richland Road. I would just like to address the board and also you regarding the ice skating rink hmm? and the property over here. Hmm? The community association has approximately seven active members mm -hmm. and I am the youngest and it takes manpower and we don't have it. And the board, not just you, previous boards also. If there is organized playground, which we used to have here, the board would maintain that playground. When there is no organized playground, the board turns their head and does nothing with that playground or very little minimal care is taken care of. The community association has asked board members, a board member to attend our monthly meetings. And we are struggling to have that attendance from the board. Yes, from what I understand, it was a mess. 
um, I wasn't exactly involved with the ice skating rink and that part of it. There was discussion of removing the plastic and I believe they were in the process of getting that removed. But we have very little help in our community association, very little support for the things that we do get accomplished. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, again, it's not a, not a statement of judgment on the plastic thing. I think it was just more of a statement of concern. And uh, Jim, like I said, if you, if you can't make the meetings, let me know. Yeah, um, me know Kelly, I fully intended to go to the last one, but I was down in Dallas. Like I had a last minute thing with work. And for anybody who's interested, we meet the second Thursday, 7 p.m., right here in this room of the township building. And we'd love to have your ideas and your support and manpower for the events we do. Thank you. Yeah, and Kelly, just as a side note, if there's ever anything in the future like that, it, it may not be during the week because my week is usually packed. But if there's a situation where you need an extra set of hands holding up a tarp or putting up signs or something, let me know. I'm usually around on Saturdays. But you let us know and where it might be difficult for me to come to a meeting during the week, I can certainly come via an extra set of hands on a weekend. Yep. Kelly, before you sit down, is there any update on the trailer? Okay, that, that's probably okay. what caused it to... We just... Okay. Okay. Well, when when we Doug is feeling better, what was going on? Because we had discussed it on Saturday. Yeah. Just send him our way. We'll we'll connect with him and make sure everybody's on the same page. But we were kind of curious where that stood. So thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. Seeing no additional public comments, we will move into the main item for discussion. Um, Irene, this was one that you had asked for specifically to try to prevent people from filibustering up yeah. during public comments. Okay, so you're you're looking to make a motion around. Yes, limit public comments to five minutes. It just takes up so much time with our agenda. We five, know. five minutes per person. Five minutes per person. Yeah. yeah. Does the board have any interest in adopting a public comment policy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, why don't we move five minutes for long drop the board? Okay. I can work with that because, yeah. like, like I said to Sue when I was talking to Sue about it earlier is this is the one time in front that people get in our period of mind. I'm all for them. But we also don't want to see somebody come up offering So um Irene, it's, do you want to what you're telling yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. That's yeah. true. So that's so that's where Colin's statement about board discretion I think helps. Um so Irene, do you want to make the motion if that's sure. I'll make a motion, or I'll, I'll like, uh, second that motion. So, uh, Peter. Aye. I read. Aye. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Next is the Act 537. Uh, a motion was made to approve the new milestone compliance schedule that is required for the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we also made a motion to authorize HydroTerra to prepare the special study for the low-pressure sewer design, and the, uh, I think the municipal agreement is still being reviewed by the WSA. Is that correct, Colin? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, we did get a draft of the pumper, the hauling ordinance for the pump out. It's another right. uh, Okay. It's, okay. It's actually separated. Um, because we were talking about that on Saturday and we hadn't seen the draft yet. I know Joe, who is also on the Zoom, um, had asked for a little bit of feedback on that. So Joe, I know you're you're there. Uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay, so is there anything that you wanted to say about that right now or do you want to wait until we get to the, um, uh, I guess that's the revised one lot, which is... Uh, Two more down here. Yeah, looks like items four, five, and six, basically. 
Okay, so we'll we'll come back to that in a second. Um, I think there's really not much that we have to do on number two yeah. statement of facts. No, I, I will follow up with uh, WA, WSA's count okay. on the status of his review. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next is uh, one that I actually was not familiar with. It's a, a new item for me, which is the proposed well water ordinance. Colin, do you want to tell us about that? I would I would def actually defer to um, our sewer engineer. Joe. Okay. So, Joe, do you want to tell us about the well water ordinance, please? Yeah, as I was uh, preparing the uh, special study, uh, reviewing the recent Pennsylvania DEP approval, uh, I did note that uh, the township was requested to send in a, a, a well ordinance for the water wells in, in the township. Uh, dug into it a little bit. I think they're looking for <clears throat> wellhead protection and some other items to prevent any surface water from infiltrating the ground and getting into the water supply. Um, I don't have any canned can well ordinances, but I have uh, surfed the web a little bit and um, could offer some uh, recommendations to your solicitor. I don't know if Colin and, and his folks have any draft well ordinances, but, um, you know, I'm not I'm not in a position to create an ordinance, that's for sure, but I certainly can can help with the technical portions of that ordinance uh, if there is one drafted or I can uh, maybe find a sample that we can start from. But it is a requirement of the Act 537 plan. Uh, I would be remiss in not including it in the special study. Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm certainly happy to work with Joe and Kraft and Julian so we comply with them. Yeah, that's like I said. Make that a, that a top priority. Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's one I'm not specifically aware of. So if, if you could, I'm gonna turn. Um, if you could shoot us a, a note about what actually and Joe, open open statement for you. It may be better from you. Can you send us a note about what the the actual requirements within the act? are for that ordinance. If it is, like you said, wellhead protection, if there's any other critical things, maybe isolation distances or whatever else has to be included in that so that we are, I don't want to say meeting the minimum, but not going above and beyond. Quite honestly, uh, the Act 537 plan and approval letter was very vague, uh, just requiring a well ordinance. I wish I could give you some clues on what they were looking for. Uh, I did contact Sue Stavey to talk about it, and there really was no recollection. I don't want to speak for Sue, but it didn't appear that there were any, was any previous movement or conversations on that. Now, I could certainly reach out to DEP to see what their concerns might be. Uh, I don't know um, if Engineer Hess has any uh, experience with this. Uh, I, I can tell you that you know, I've been involved with well drilling over the years, but I've never really created an ordinance that's specifically needed for an Act 537 uh, approval. Joe, Joe, let me ask you uh, this question. Is this ordinance needed even though the township doesn't have a public water system? Oh, uh, yeah, this is for private wells. Okay. So why don't, why don't you send me the specs that you think need to be in this ordinance to comply with our 537 plan. And then I'll work with you in, in drafting that ordinance. So is this a DEP requirement or did we create this no, requirement? DEP requirement, Jim. Do the 537 plan. Who prepared the original ordinance? Well, no, I think he means the original would have been part of the Act 537 yeah. packet. That would have been Light Heigl, then followed by McCarthy Engineer. So there, we had two sets of engineers that failed to include that as part of the. And the book that it changed the regulation. Well, that, that's true. Because I'm looking at my experience. Well, they may have their regulation now. I'm yeah. curious. I, I was going to say, I guess the first thing would be we look at like the Sewage Facilities Act. Yeah, and or your 537. 
saying. Yeah. Why well, I'm Joe's saying I, I, relaying I, that it says we need a yeah well protection. Well, the actual like the submitted plan. I know there's not a peep of that. Yeah. In there. It's in the approval yeah. letter specifically. It's in the approval letter from DET for the five thirty seven plan. And how old is the five thirty seven? I'm sorry, Mr. Hess. I couldn't. I, you're breaking up a little bit. If you could get a little closer to the mic. What's the date of the 537 plan? What's the date of it? Yeah, 2019. Uh, don't quote me on this, but it, I think it's 2019. It is. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Yeah, but, but then the but, EP so, came back and put it as a, as a condition. Right. Came back. DEP put that and they said we have to have it in there. Okay. So whether it was overlooked or not, or this is something else they threw in there, that's you know, yeah, because Chuck you know, makes a valid point. Through, they may yeah. have changed the criteria or the requirements yeah. and tossed that in relatively late stage. Yeah. Or another valid point would be that our previous engineer didn't know the hell he was doing. Well, we got to find that out. That's the the thing that we were asking about is what that actually has in terms of requirements for it, whether that's you just have to keep a well cap on your well, you can't have an open well. Could be that simple, could be more involved. At, at this point, we don't know. We need to look, the attorney needs to look. And then uh, it, based on, yeah. I really don't think it would affect anything that's pre-existing. Yeah. That's that's the other thing. That's a very valid point, Colin. It may be a situation where everything that's pre-existing is effectively grandfathered. It would, it would obviously affect new development. I don't, yeah. don't right. I don't think that it would affect the existing wells in the township. So yeah. the impact will be minimal. Yeah. New wells to be Right. Right. Yeah. Well, right. I, right. Well, I, was I, I actually, I know that specifically, Chuck, because I had to have a well redug a couple of years ago, and I had to, to prove to craft that it was 100 foot from right. any other well or, or septic drain field. So. Yeah, I just pulled up the approval letter uh, from DEP. It is dated May uh, 2019, uh, and it states the plan also provides for development of a well ordinance and implementation of a sewer management ordinance. I couldn't find anything in the plan that suggested a well ordinance. Uh, I mean, I certainly didn't word search it or anything. But uh, I just was really going from the approval letter. I can certainly dig into it, and I can get Colin some uh, some technical um, points to include in that ordinance. Uh, we certainly don't have a problem with that. I uh, know a couple uh, hydrogeologists, and they've also they've already offered some comments on what an L a well ordinance should consider. So I'm glad to share those with Colin. If that helps uh, move the ball along, that would be great. Okay. I'd say let's yeah, step I think one that, and figure it out. I think that I can have a draft for you next month. Okay. Fantastic. So if you want to take action to authorize our preparation of that ordinance. Well, we need to amend the agenda to do that or no? I mean, is it the septic fund? No. Oh, the, well, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Um, Okay, yeah, I'll make a motion to authorize Kozlov Stout to prepare the, uh, the well ordinance for review at next month's meeting. Second. Paul, Peter. Hi. Hi, Rain. Hi. Jim. Hi. Why don't you just call DEP and ask them what they want? If, they, if they're the ones that are requiring it, then shouldn't they tell us what the hell they want? That's not, that's not how big government works, though, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's well, unfortunate. Well, they, no, I think they don't work. They, they don't work with any logic. No, you're, no, you're, Jim, Jim, your Jim, your point is well taken. I think that yeah. Roger Tara could do that. Yeah, they may have yeah. a sample ordinance. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I certainly don't have a problem. Tell us what they want. Yeah, no, that's a great yeah. idea. I, I, I would recommend that. I just wouldn't do it uh, without the approval from the board or the township. Uh, but, I mean, it certainly shows good faith to DEP that we're trying to resolve these issues. And I can I can talk to Tim uh, Wagner at DEP just to see what he would expect to see in an ordinance. Thank you, my, my understanding is that we based our old management program on feedback from the DEP. So I don't under, I, I see no reason why they wouldn't work with us on this ordinance as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next is the sewer. Yes. 
we need to well, come, come, to come up come up to the mic now otherwise they can't hear you on this on the zoom why do you want to put disorders on the on the wells because Order. we don't want to al it is required by the pennsylvania state department of environment and it probably doesn't affect you yeah. anyway because you're if you have a well it's pre-existing yeah but the, the thing is that starts out with little shit and then that winds up people pay for it. Okay, this is required. So they got to leave her alone because that well does not belong wait. to the township. Al, Al, Al. Oh, wait a minute. Respect, no, finish. no, wait, no, you wait a minute. The township doesn't have a choice. This is in our Act 537 plan. We are required by law to enact this ordinance. There, there's, to, no, there's no debate. What does that have to do with the well? The DEP in approving our Act 537 the plan. The DEP are worried about the shit that goes in the water. From please, the please, sit, please sit down. So, so Al. To put it put it straight, this is something that we are legally required to do, okay. and we're going to do. I don't want to make it sound like we're doing the bare minimum, but we're going to be try to be as minimally invasive as possible with this. And to that end, Colin, I think you're probably right. It's probably only going to be applicable for okay. new installations. I just I just did. Okay. Okay. Let's take it down a notch, everybody. So okay. we're 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 gonna keep. Where, where's your Al, where's your law degree hold on, from? Hold on, guys. We're gonna keep this meeting civil, or we're gonna adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Next is the sewage management program. Joe Baldas is on the line to discuss the drafted uh, guidance booklet. Joe, do you yeah. want to say a few words? Sure. Uh, Kimberly and I went through the uh, previously prepared guidance document. Uh, that was part of the uh, previous sewer management program. Um, working with Colin and looking at the, the drafted ordinances, uh, the ordinance and the resolution, we believe that uh, it would be best in the, be in the township's best interest to make sure that those two documents are fully coordinated. Uh, there's some issues with fees and schedules that are in there that aren't exactly consistent with um, the way the plan is currently being administered. And it certainly is inconsistent with uh, what, what's currently drafted in the ordinance. Uh, there's not a lot of comments. Uh, like did Kimberly shared with uh, the township and we did share with Colin. I would recommend, uh, you know, a brief conference call with your attorney and maybe suing a, a member of the board just to kind of go through those comments. Uh, like I said, some of them are subtle, but then there are some of them that we need to gain some additional information from the township uh, before we can go ahead and finalize that document. It, there really isn't much work left to find, finalize in that document and then uh, coordinating that with the two, with the ordinance and the uh, resolution. So, um, I would recommend that we can get on a conference call here sometime in the next week, and we should be able to button those two items, well, those three items up for uh, approval at next month's meeting. Okay, and that was the SMP handbook that you texted us about, right? So, okay. So I will I will read through that. I haven't gotten a chance to just this past week, but uh, I imagine Jim and Irene, you can do the same. We'll, we'll circulate comments back to you, Joe, and then we can discuss it at next month's either uh, workshop or board meeting. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Moving into the next thing is the revised on-lot sewage disposal uh, systems, the OLDS ordinance. Uh, this is to amend that ordinance based around the change in our, our SEO dynamic to allow uh, certified haulers to do the inspection. We have the ordinance prepared. We've reviewed it. Everything appears to be in good order. At this point, all we need is a motion to allow Attorney McFarland to advertise. Yeah, if I could, uh, I would recommend that we hold off on that until we coordinate the guidance document with that ordinance and the resolution. Okay. Joe is recommending that we wait until we have the resolution, the guidance document, and the, the ordinance ready for advertisement. Joe, will the guidance document be ready at, by the next meeting? Uh, as soon as we, you and I get together on the phone, uh, we could have it ready within a day, honestly. And do we need to adopt that 
guidance book by resolution? I don't believe so. Now, this was offered in the past to the public. Um, there was a uh, a link on the website. Supposedly, I, I didn't physically check, but I believe there was a link on the website to the guidance document. So it was public information uh, that was shared with the public uh, with the release of the previous sewer management program. So if we can if we can do both of those other things by motion, we we should just set the the, the advertising in motion and then. Well, well, you want to authorize the advertising of this ordinance tonight because. You won't be able to actually enact it until your October BOS meeting. Yeah. Because you need 30, a 30 day grace period, which will not be satisfied by our next meeting in September. Yeah. Okay. So, Joe, are you, are you agreeable to that? Well, Colin, there are just a couple changes that um, are we would recommend in the ordinance, uh, oh, okay. specifically the schedule. So the guidance document was a little vague on the schedule. Honestly, there was some incorrect information that was in that guidance document. And I don't, I'm just concerned that all three of those need to be coordinated, uh, you know, ahead of time. The schedule. Can, we, can we give authorization to have the schedule updated and then the, uh, the ordinance advertised? That way we are still moving in between meetings. Yes, you can. You can. Okay. Jim and I are you both comfortable with that? Yes. Jim. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm not on I'm I'm very uncomfortable with the whole thing with DEP. Well I mean, truth, you know, truth be let's told, put in sewers that we can't afford. We don't have ten million dollars. What's a it's all a joke anyway. We don't have to we have to go through the process and when we get to the final bill, then that's the part we're gonna have to pitch unless something comes down the line with grants. Yeah. In the goes, meantime, you know, we, we can spend a ton of money right. on all of this stuff we don't so that we can satisfy choice. DEP. I know I'm not complaining right. about us. Right. I'm saying DEP is ridiculous for, right. how, for either even thinking that this is a possibility in a small town. Right. But we've also seen examples of our previous and they were forced in despite the and this happens Rob, over at Robeson Township. Robeson was a prime example of yeah. that, that yeah. They, they said, no, we can't afford to do it. And DEP they says that the yeah. DEP basically said, like, you can either do it with funding that we're giving you or we, you can do it without any. Oh, they'll, they'll figure it out. We'll yeah. go bankrupt. Yeah, we don't have a choice. Yeah, we're to reiterate, we're, we're going to do everything in our power not to have that happen. But there are things that we have to do in the time being to avoid getting like a $300 a day fund. Minimum. Minimum. That's a good idea. Why don't we invite our state representative and state senator to our next meeting? I like the and, idea. And let them explain to us exactly how they how they feel that we're able to do. And let them know your yeah. Uh, I mean, we had we had talked about sending a letter, but I think I like that idea too. But whether they actually show up or not it would remain to be seen. But. And if they don't show up, then that's when we slam them for not being here to give us any guy. Jim, it sounds like you should be. <laughs> I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Kim, uh, do you want to? Well, if I may, I'm Kimberly DeRosa with Hydroterra Professionals. At the workshop meeting, we had briefly discussed contacting our senator and um, other representatives and inviting them to tour the township to give a positive feel and to understand completely what is happening within the township. Um, I was hoping also today to get your blessing to call and reach out as well. And Jim, if we could coordinate a time that we could you know, be together for that call and to speak and explain and then invite them out. I do agree that that's a fantastic idea and something that was going to be and still is critical to the grant process. Thank you. I mean, just to make it official, I'll make a motion to authorize Hydra Terra to contact our state representatives on behalf of Marion Township. Second. Who seconded? Uh, give it to Jim. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. 
um, back to the original point at hand. Um, I will make a motion to authorize uh, Hydroterra to work with Kozlov Stout in uh, updating the, the necessary items found within the guidance booklet, as well as the uh, on-lot disposal system ordinance updates. Uh, let's bu let's bifurcate those. Let's say again? Do the, let's bifurcate those. Bi do, okay. Do the motion okay. on the guidance book first. Okay. So I will authorize. A motion to authorize Hydroterra to work with Kozlov Stout on updating the guidance booklet. Second. We'll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, and next would be to authorize Kozlov Stout and Hydroterra. Well, authorize my ability to advertise the ordinance after I make the changes suggested by your sewer engineer. Ah, okay, so I was going to do that, and then a motion to advertise. You want to you want to double it up? Yeah, you you'd want to make a motion to advertise the ordinance after. Yeah, I was I was going to do them as two separate. One one is one, fine. One's fine. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to authorize Kozlov Stout to advertise the on lot sewage disposal system ordinance after making the necessary corrections in conjunction with Hydroterra. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item is the sewage management program resolution. We can't adopt that until the ordinance is adopted. Uh, so we're going to put a pin in that until realistically at least in October based on the, the advertising requirements. So we'll put that one on, on hold for now. Uh, the next item is the LSA Category 4 Program Grant. Uh, at last month's meeting, we made a motion to authorize Kimberly to prepare and submit the grant application using the low-pressure sewer design. The deadline for submittal is September 30th. Projects must include the community's quality of life as a consideration. Uh, infrastructure, planning, design, and construction are eligible projects under this grant, and no match is required. The fund maximum is currently undetermined. And uh, PA representatives uh, Barry Joswiak, or Representative Barry Joswiak, and Senator Chris Gephardt need to be notified of our applications, and we need some letters of support about that particular thing. Um, I know we had talked about that at the workshop, but I think that's that's going to be the only thing other than the board writing a letter in support would be getting maybe some some residents who are in in favor of us getting some grants for this project. So if you're if you're a resident of Marion Township and you'd like to uh, help us try to secure some grant money towards the planning that we are legally obligated to do around Act 537. Uh, let us know. Let Sue know. We'll be happy to, to help either give you a, a format for a letter. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or crazy. Just a simple statement that I, you know, I live in Marion Township, and I think it's important that we, we get grant money to help pay for projects of, such as the, the Act 537 planning, and we really appreciate everything and anything we can get. But... Uh, I don't think we have any major movement on that particular piece of it since Saturday. Um, the uh, next item is actually the, there's a resolution to be able to apply for that um, based on the deadline for September 30th. Um, stop me if I'm wrong, but I almost think we would have to authorize Kimberly to submit it. That way we're not scrambling at next month's meeting to do it last second. So. I'll make a, a motion to uh, authorize Resolution 2023-4, uh, which will allow uh, Hydroterra to submit for the 2023 LSA Category 4 Program Grant. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Kimberly, can I ask you a housekeeping question on that? So I know we had um, looked at the paperwork and uh, um, for auditing purposes, we need to have a separate account. So I just double checked. I did receive some feedback on that. Um, at some point, if you could just give me a relative idea how much that potentially could be because um, fees associated with creating a new account, and I don't like getting yelled at by the auditors. Pam had responded to an email I had sent her based on the recommendations to create a uh, different account. So it's just uh, how much would you anticipate? I know it's kind of up in the air. Um, but I guess maximum amounts. Um, and then as 
it, is it one of those like you just take out the pawns as you use it or would it be something like just one fell swoop it would be used at one time so that's what uh, uh the email response is from the bank so if we could if you could email just a summary of that with me um and that okay. way i could see it in front of me i okay. don't want to answer anything incorrectly yeah. Um, yeah. Off okay the so i'll them. forward the emails that i've had uh with him so far so that you're in the loop with everything Okay. I mean, with most grant things, there's a period of time to which you have to use it and right, reporting right. period. So right. it doesn't have to be in one fell swoop. It's obviously easier right, right. when you but, have to. My concern yeah. is, bank's concern, excuse me, we work with Pam Colletti at Fulton Bank. Let me clarify that. I apologize. Uh, is any fees associated? Yeah. So I'm just, uh, I just uh, I said, oh my goodness, I didn't see an email from her. I pulled it up and here it is. So just some more housekeeping stuff and clerical stuff, essentially. So, mm -hmm. but thank you for pointing out that aspect of the grant's application to us because again i haven't worked with the township yet and in, in receiving any grants so yeah. yeah absolutely we'll coordinate on that thank you thank yeah. you all right so so i'll make sure that i forward the emails to you and and you could share it with me then. thank you peter you had mentioned about getting the public to write a letter of support yes would it be prudent to have uh, sue type up like a uh, something that we could at least bring the meetings and well, have I mean, people I, sign. If need be, like I a could, petition of sorts. Aren't, aren't there sample letters already? Yeah. Well, I mean, not not that you've written, but I thought there were some yeah. canned letters. Yeah. I remember, remember yeah. something wrong, Kim. Like there's, there's sample letters, aren't there? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Jim, to your to your point, yes, I'm sure Hydroterra could send some over because there are apparently pre-prepared letters to get people started. Not everybody's the greatest writer in the world. I mean, I've been well, I mean, can't we just do it in the form of one petition that we we the undersigned, blah blah blah, just as people come into meetings, have them sign it. If people come in for a permit, if they're willing to have them sign it, um, I, maybe even distribute it to a few businesses to have them ask I'm, people when they I'm come in. I'm not sure how that works actually. Yes. Yeah. Maybe chasing a grant again. It, would you be willing to send a letter? He said, "What do I say?" I said, "What you just said to me. I'm in support of the sewer. You know, before this grant, sign your name, put a date on it. Done." Okay. Yeah, there's there is something powerful in having an individual letter mm -hmm. explaining their position, and it does not have to be grammatically beautiful I or that, perfect. But you get one or two if you do it that way. If you do it in the form of a petition, you yeah. might get two hundred. We did. Well, I don't even care if we get letters that say I'm against. Well, that wouldn't help. That wouldn't grant. help grant. It wouldn't help the grant, but it would help us when we sit down with the politicians. Well, right now we're talking about the grants. Well, so get the grants. Yeah. So, so Jim, yeah. the, the the side of the letters that you're looking for, there's actually about a ream of them, about yay thick, that got submitted with the plan that was submitted during public comment. There was, yeah, there was, I think it was like 126 letters. It was, it was a huge amount. So that, that side of the door, we've got, we've got that well documented. Um, but yeah, Kim, if you have anything that you could send over to Sue that we can have out to help people, or even just a simple thing that people could sign their name on it, like Jim was saying, and they can turn it in, that does help speed up the process and just generally alleviate some of the work on residents. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next is another grant that we're, we're looking to go after. It's the 2023 LSA statewide program grant. At last month's meeting, we made a motion to authorize Kimberly from Hydroterra to prepare and submit the grant application using the uh, low pressure sewer design. The dead deadline for submission on that grant was November 30th. Uh, all projects applying for these grants must improve the community's quality of life, just like the other grant. Uh, infrastructure planning, design, and construction are all eligible under this grant program. No matches required, and fund maximum on this one is one million dollars. Uh, PA Representative Barry Joswiak and, and Senator Chris Gebhardt need to be notified of our application, and much like the other grant, we need letters of support. So if we can get letters for one, we can get letters for the other, I would assume, or just a general letter in support of both. Sorry, sorry. So get, getting, <laughs> getting your steps in today. <laughs> are very important <laughs> yes if um it's easier for everyone you can absolutely say i am in general in support of a local share account lsa application because both of them are local share account grants and the great thing about the statewide is that there is more time so if we have more residents um that 
just need more time or more officials. Um, if we do want to revisit talking to our commissioners. I think just having till November is great on that. And again, there is no match required. Um, so that's another positive for the township. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on the agenda is scheduling a town hall. I think we should do this in, honestly, like either October or November. Like we gotta be sensitive around like Thanksgiving in November, but I would like to see us have some sort of gathering like we talked about at the workshop at probably the, one of the, the local elementary schools. They were the most receptive and they have the best, I'd say space and venue for that. Uh, but have an open invitation to come out and we'll, we'll kind of give everybody a state of the union style address what's actually going on with the Act 537, what, what our legal obligations are, why we're in sort of the situation that we're in, and some of the reasons why, for example, some people say like, oh, you should just pull the plan back, offer an explanation about, we can't just do that because there's a legal precedent set through. Like I know we had found court cases in the past and things like that. Just try to get everybody to understand the, the particular uh, predicament that we're in from a, a, a legal standpoint. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Would you prefer October? I know October is going to be here before we realize it. Or... That's large enough to accommodate the public. So, but I mean, yeah. there, we, could, we don't I have to do it in conjunction yeah. with a meeting either. It would yeah. just be if, Absolutely. let's say, they're available the first week of November, then yeah. obviously we'd book it for the first week of November. Uh, one second, Dan. Um, Sooner than later. Yeah. Again. Sooner than later. Sooner I than later. So let's let's we'll shoot we can October. shoot for October. That'd be October. Dan, you were going to say something, uh, and if you could step up the uh, mic, I apologize, but it it really helps with the people that are over yeah. over the stream. Why don't you do it in conjunction with your budget uh, proposal well, for we, twenty? So budget yeah. budget yeah. stuff. Yeah, budget is always a long meeting, and that's well, usually that's November, right? We we try to we try to approve the budget in November. No. Okay. So yeah. we, I know we, we talk about the budget, but we past couple of years it's been approved in November. Thirty days, isn't it? He's thirty. Yeah. So we usually we do we do the budget in October. We do it in October, and then it's ratified in November. Yeah, you have you have it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a chance to really tell the community where the money goes, how it goes, and why it goes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can, it, nothing says we can't talk about that at the town hall, but I, I would be hesitant. You don't have to go into great lengths. Yeah. I, I don't want to take the like two hours that is us pouring through the budget items that we usually do to see no, where no, money can go. No, no, get that yeah. deep in. But I, I wouldn't have any opposition to it being a mainly Act 537 thing with a couple other State of the Union style things, the budgets, um, fire safety, police service, et cetera. I'm not seeing any dissent on the board either. So yeah, uh, other than, like I said, we don't want to tear into the budget for like, yes, this is what we're planning for 2024 in any great degree, but yeah, I know it's it's a good one. It's a good suggestion. Um, so that could be a quick meeting. You know, we don't have any money, so yeah. <laughs> that's why we haven't fixed the roads. There's no cash. Yeah, but, but I mean, we it's... could we could double your taxes though if we'd prefer. But that won't do it. Yeah, that that won't even do it, Jim. That was... that won't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That won't do it. Yeah, because like I. Yeah. We won't labor too much time on this, but yeah. that was just for the ha-has <laughs> of that, Jim. That was that one number that I had spit out at the last budget review meeting was we would have had to have like 10, 10 times. 10, yeah, minutes. about tenfold the taxes yeah. might get a and, and that And that would just one. give us enough to start to get ahead of things. Yeah. Like that's that's the cost of road work these days. Um, okay, so let's kind of endeavor to set something for October. Um mm -hmm. Let's. What, what, will, it, will it be before your next workshop meeting? Realistically, but I would say I was actually going to suggest if we just authorize Stu to book a town hall date in October, pending availability of the, the school well, in district. That, in that in that case, you might as well authorize for advertising right. of the special meeting. Okay. okay, so I'll I'll make a motion. What was it? I mean, I 
can be looking at a calendar. Other than knowing that there's 31 days in October, I don't know exactly what that's going to... Um, really, uh, some of it's going to come down to work schedule. Some of it's going to come down to the school being available. Well, what I would say is let's start by calling the school and see what dates are available. They say literally everything in October is available I'm during the night, then the world is our... I know, but I'm just saying if they say that, okay. the world's our oyster. School. Otherwise, um, the, this, what happened by the West Elementary? He called and yeah, talked to them, and they're yeah, they're not able to accommodate us at this time. Like the the church down the road that does the sound stuff, they don't have. Yeah, let's say we did we did try that, and then we called the school, and the school basically said like, yeah, sure, no problem. So. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it might it might be during the day. We don't know, but I doubt it because the schools. But yeah. um, yeah. if yeah. if uh, if Christ Lutheran gets back to us, that's certainly maybe a little closer. But oh we're yeah. yeah yeah. So I mean, give, give him a call again. But I'll mm -hmm. I'll I'll make kind of an open ended motion. I'm going to authorize uh, the secretary to uh, book a town hall meeting and advertise the dates. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, next is the road occupancy permit ordinance amendment. Um, Attorney McFarland suggested that we update this ordinance to assist with the broadband infrastructure program, which is bringing high-speed internet to un underserved or unserved communities in Pennsylvania. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I don't have any problems with it. Do you guys have any problems with it? Um, so, Colin, is that ready? Is it pretty much ready no, to go? You need, for... Well, you need to authorize my preparation that we're going to, but it shouldn't really take that long or cost much money because we've done this for other municipalities in the area in anticipation of these okay. broadband projects occurring throughout the region. Okay, so I'll make a motion to authorize Attorney McFarland, McFarland to prepare and advertise the road occupancy permit ordinance amendment. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. One comment. I was just talking to mm -hmm. We update the application form and to include the contact information what is that form for us right now? Form doesn't have Takes it real to get back. Yes. Your your input will be sought preparing that we Can we just do that? No, they, they already made a motion. That'll be part of the Why do you say Yeah. Anything else we need on that, guys? No. no? Okay. Uh, move into the next item, which is the proposed Airbnb ordinance. Uh, we did get a, res a call from a resident inquiring about converting a home into an Airbnb. We currently do not have any ordinances covering Airbnb use. Um, Colin, do you have any? Any updates or recommendations around well, that? I'm, all, I'm also happy to prepare this ordinance. Again, okay. it, it shouldn't take long or cost much money because I've done now a few of these for boroughs that have many short-term yeah. rentals. And I've prepared those ordinances actually using a very good template from Monroe County, which is where the Poconos are located. Mm -hmm. So I think, it's a good, I think it's a good idea to the extent that your zoning ordinance, however, yeah. does not contemplate this use You'll either want the short-term rental ordinance to say some use in the zoning ordinance constitutes a short-term rental subject to this ordinance, or you'll want a zoning ordinance amendment specifically identifying short-term rentals and where they should be located throughout the township. So we should bring that up with the joint group. That's the, we're meeting again in September, right? Mm -hmm. 
Can you can you send um who it moved again? Who's the secretary for Heidelberg? Nicole. Nicole. Um, can you send Nicole an email asking that that be put onto the agenda for consideration? We can get, maybe get the wheels spinning on on that being part of the the joint because we know that's that takes forever <laughs> to get anything added to that. Bro, you bro, you want you want well, you yeah, want, we want to stand alone. You don't want you don't want all the you don't want all of the regulations on short-term rentals in the zoning ones to sell. You just want the zoning ones to dictate where they're allowed. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. To the extent I was clear, you can interpret rooms for boarders or tourists as short-term rental. That's what other zoning board hearing boards in the area have done, unless you want to take the time to amend the joint zoning ones. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's if we don't have to. Like, if you think there's strong enough language already in there that we could have a standalone ordinance and it would be effective, then that certainly saves a huge amount of steps with trying to update the joint zoning. The only thing is that the other municipalities, if, they, if it's not covered in the joint today, yeah, maybe the other municipalities the might want yep, yeah, and then it's covered. Yeah. My, my, my point, I guess, to be clear, is that you may have a use in the zoning ordinance that already may cover short-term rentals. Gotcha. But doesn't explicitly call it a short term rental. Gotcha. And so and wanna, we want to. And you're back to the rental issue that we had a couple of months ago. I'm still working on that ordinance. I just haven't had time. We, I, we want to definitely differentiate. Rental inspection. The rental inspection. Yeah, we def we, definitely we want, two different yeah, things. We want to differentiate this concept of a short term border tourist slash thing versus long term right, and right. we don't want this to turn into a long term use. And that's something I've encountered yeah. because we have, you know, the municipalities have people that buy homes specifically for it to be used mm -hmm. as a full time short term. Yeah. yeah. At, at the board's discretion, you can set the the maximum uh stay yeah. at a short term rent. Typically yeah, maximum number typically it's, it's thirty days. But you can certainly reduce that number. I guess this is the what's the best course of action because we're going to go back to the concept of protection. We want to ensure the safety of the residents that are renting these facilities within the community, and we don't want someone to say, "Okay, move out for a day, move back in." It's now thirty days again, and we want to make sure that the facilities are are, are adequately maintained, yeah, so that people are protected. So my my thing is if you're if you're Airbnb it right. like for the example I used at the the workshop is let's say you're you're going away for a week and you decide to rent your house out that sort of use is really kind of innocuous that's that's right. minimal impact the concern that I had was if we had somebody like you said buying up a house and having it be Airbnb twenty four seven three sixty five and and that's that's the concern because we're we're effectively having a a rapid revolving door of apartment tenants. Well, the, the idea is that anyone listing a property on Verbo, Airbnb, would need to get a short-term rental permit and with a yearly inspection to ensure that the place is actually safe for human expenses. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing the draft. Cool. Um, okay. Do we... Uh, I'll make a motion to authorize Kozlov Stout to prepare the uh, short-term rental Ordinance draft. Second. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Yeah. I want to see the advertisement for this B and B. Like, why are you coming to Marion Township? Yeah, I mean, you can do. Come and play some. Air hot air, some uh, hockey. Yeah, yeah, you can play some pickleball in the tennis court if it's cracks in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is true. This is true. We, could, uh, we can have Dan, Dan can start the pickleball league. Okay. Uh, well, all, all year round. You're, you're probably okay for the safety inspection too. Uh, next is the robocalling. Um, I have not gotten a chance, admittedly, to sit down and dig through the, the contracts on both of those. But again, just to reiterate, I want to make sure that the 
that's the terms of service on that does not have any hidden fees. I've worked with this sort of service at work before, and most of them do have some sort of limit in place where if you go over a certain amount, they start billing you per thing and it gets quite costly. So I want to make, I, I know, I, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will, I will do my best to, to read through that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, that's my. Yeah. Per, per minute. No, so, uh, for the per minute, it isn't to worry. Like at, at work, we're talking like huge, huge numbers. But if we went over like 300,000 or, or whatever it was, then it started being like 12 cents a text message. So yeah. it, yeah, we don't have that many, but it's, it's a, it's a, a consideration because it could be different if you're talking about voice messaging as well because usually text messages are a lot cheaper a lot more innocuous but if you don't have people that have cell phones you have to do a, a an actual robo voice call i don't want to see us have like a, a dollar call or, or something like that as a fee halfway through the year so isn't there any other way to do this other than spending 2500 yeah. yeah. no no yeah, unfortunately, everything costs money these days, Jim. But um, I will I will endeavor to do a side by side on that and, and look. What are we using this for? Garbage well, pickup. There's lots of things. It would be like if we had a snow emergency or closures, yep. or flooding situation. Yep. Something as simple as the trash isn't being picked up. The car show. Yeah, there's there's tons of things that we could yep. use for it. Um, I just okay. want to make sure that if we do go in on this and we actually start using it the way that we're intending to use it, that we're not going that like June time, oh crap, we ran out of minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So. Well, I guess I'm, I'm just old enough to remember that if it snows a lot, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Right. And, right. and if your garbage didn't get picked up today, I guess right. it'll probably get picked up. <laughs> I have more patience. <laughs> What, they've, they've gone around the blockade? Yeah, well, then they need a rest. No. That's awesome. Right. Well, no. Well, we, we learned was, that. But. Was, right. It, it was not our fault. It was fire That is. So. That's our fault. No. It's, it's not. <laughs> It's not at all. Because well, when out when somebody sues somebody, right, it'll be well, awful. They were pulled up and asked to do their test, and they did not have the proper signage. We now have the proper signage, and that will take care of it because of that incident. And that was part of the money we spent yeah. to, to have the proper signage. So, either way, I will look at that. Okay. And I want to make sure that we get something that's going to be cost effective. Yeah, I agree. I do. I don't want to spend any more money than we have to. Yeah. We need it for other things. Yeah. And there are, there are some that I looked at. And again, I got to read the terms of service where certain usage was actually free and they would only bill you for mm. certain other things. So, well, you would be the expert to look at that. So, I'll, I'll dig into that Thank and you. then figure that out. Um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, additional enforcement action against property owner of 1117 William Penn Boulevard. A motion would be needed to ratify the zoning and code enforcement officials issuance of zoning and IPNC notices of violation to the owner and occupant of the property. A motion is also needed to authorize the solicitor to institute an injunction action against the owner and any occupant of the property if one or both of the notices of violations are not appealed. Um, Colin, do we have any change or movement on that since the last time? No, we don't. Okay, so it's it's safe to say that the the order of the last, I want to say this, the last court outing have not been satisfied. No, the, the property continues to be in violation of our property maintenance code. Okay. So in the, the proper process of this, the, the only next step that is within that, that whole sphere of things is the um, issue of the injunctive action and the authorizing the zoning and quote for enforcement official uh to pursue the the owner and occupant of the property correct right as i last meeting there are two ways 
issue a citation, you get fined through the district justice's office. Or if that doesn't deter the conduct, you go to the court of common pleas and you get an injunction with a court order telling the property owner to abate the condition. And if that condition is not abated, then a petition for contempt will be filed. The, we, we got fined. Yeah. We've that gone the not, citation. That does not deter the conduct. Okay, we've, we've gone the citation route for years, years, literal years. So because for two things, it's actually been not a single action stream. It's gone through the process a couple of times and we're now to the point here's, where here's, here's what, here's what happens. Okay. Yeah. Here's what happens. The township institutes a, a court proceeding by citation with the district justice. And then we meander through that process for a little while. The, the property's condition improves slightly and then it gets worse. We, the township appreciates that work, but it's, it is still non-compliant. No, no. Your, 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 your backyard is still a mess. Your backyard is still a mess. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, the, town, the, town, the township is addressing this matter and will be addressing this matter in court. Okay. Bring it, bring it on. Okay. Okay. We have, and, you, and, and you were told to remove all your junk from your property you, for years. We've asked it's not, you it's not fair. Times. Excuse we, me. We've asked you how many times to clean that up and you promised that you're going to do it. And we've given you, we've cut you a break several times. And it's, well, I just drove by it. I just drove by it on the way here and you got all that junk out front again. There's a, there's a grill out there. There's all kinds of stuff sitting out there. Well, then take it to scrap. Here's, here's well, then what, find another property to store your stuff on that you won't be in. In, here's what it boils down against to against okay. ordinance. So the, 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 I think we've given you so many opportunities to take care of this, and so many suggestions on how you could uh, how you could could make it compliant, and it just appears like you just ignore us every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's time. At this point, at, per Colin's statement, we've exhausted the first avenue on this and the only other avenue is that injunctive action. So at this point, we as a board would need to make a motion on authorizing that injunctive action. Can we go after court costs on all this? To, to the to the extent that the notices we just issued are not approved. That's the motion. Can we go after costs on this? So to the because to, now it's we're up to, to we're up to okay. probably well over three thousand. So so already. this so this is an action in equity which means that we're simply asking, asking the court to mandate something. To the extent that the mandate is not followed, we will be filing a petition for contempt where we will ask for attorney's fees and costs. And, and we so can- please avoid that. And we can also, Jim, we can still file citations with the district justice's office and recoup our costs and fines in pursuing the injunction. Wouldn't you rather not have that happen? Please just clean it up. Do what you've promised us in the past. Well, you've been cleaning it up for as long as I've been lived in the township, and that's a long time now. Do it in do it in give us two weeks. We'll even we'll even make sure you get people to come out and help you move this stuff. I'm sorry. The goats. That that that, yeah, that would all that would be. also be pursued in an injunction. Yeah, that, that that actually falls yeah. under the, the leash. As, yeah. as weird as this is gonna sound, it's the leash the leash it's ordinance a, covers it's, it's not just up, dogs, it's yeah. animals. So if you see animals out, whether it's goats, dogs, whatever, call the police because it is actually a, a ordinance. Yeah. If, if it comes from 
on your property, you call the police. If they're off his property at any point in time, you call the police because they have to be restrained. If they're on his property moseying around, that's, that's one thing. But uh, if the goats are on your property or anyone else's property, go outside, take a picture, call the police. We hate to call the police about these things, but, but we need to have a for. record of this. That's all. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, yeah, I that's... recounted that myself, and I was like, what is going on? I think it was more shell shock for me that day. I thought it yeah. was a dog one day when yeah, I was, it was a dog initially. Yeah. But you, you get it. You're gonna have to put a fence up there. Yeah. Keep the goats in your yeah, not in the front yeah. yard, <laughs> and and keep them penned up. Yeah. You're perfectly willing to have them, but you got to keep them penned up. So. And by the same token, if your dogs are barking after ten o'clock at night, he can call wow. the police on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's. I'm just letting you know that's. I'm just letting you know that's the ordinance. But Excuse well, me, guys, excuse, guys, excuse guys. Me. Oh. I'm just letting you know that's the ordinance after 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, do you want to make a motion? Before 10 o'clock, it's not an issue. Okay. So, well, I mean, you, the only thing, if you're going to make that motion, it is just to authorize the pursuance of an injunction. Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize the solicitor to uh, institute an injunction action against the owner of 1117 Bullion Pen Boulevard. If, if the notices are not appealed. If the notices are not appealed. Second. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I also want to ratify the officer's issuance of those notices. Okay. So, uh, I'll make a motion to author, or I guess we authorize the code official to ratify those notices. Motion to ratify the code officer's issuance of the notice. Motion to authorize the to ratif code. Ratify, ratify the code, off the code officer's issuance of the notices. Motion to ratify the code officer's issuance of the notices. Second. Okay. You might have to listen to the. I read a second. Aye. Aye. Jim. Aye. Please get this done so we can avoid all this. It's really that simple. Next up is the Stonecroft Village deed for open space lot 215. Uh, this was the lot that contained all the open space property within Stonecroft. Section number eight, which fronts, uh, fronts William Penn Boulevard, had been mistakenly conveyed to the Stonecroft HOA when it should have been deeded to Marion Township. Um, Colin had reached out to Landmark about splitting the deed correctly. Um, last update we had was they still hadn't contacted you. Okay. I do have an update. So I called the surveyor that prepared the exhibit at Matthew and Hockley, an individual by the name of Andrew Day, and they did not hear any word of this issue. Lovely. Um, so going that route, they were going to get in touch with Landmark and let them know that I had called about correcting this situation because the exhibit that was recorded would have to be changed to eliminate the reference to open space number eight and that it's being dedicated to the Stonecroft Village Unit Owners Association. So I learned him that you know, what they prepared was not correct and that they need to check with their client at the end to get it rectified. And I also mentioned to him that the township solicitor had attempted to reach out to the landmark attorney, um, but with no luck. So we're trying another chain now to get that resolved. Um, and I think at last month's meeting, if I'm not mistaken, and and maybe it was you asked for a, it was uh, you asked for a copy of the plan that shows that. So I do have a copy here for you then uh, of the exhibit. Copy of them. Correct. No. Um, well, didn't say that. I'm not sure how the the right away, whether it's fee simple or it truly is a right away. I don't know how that's been. How did we own it previously? I would we think still, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The point yeah. is, we still own. Yeah. Okay? That's the the point is, we still own it. As I as I tried to explain last meeting. 
we own the property. It was mistakenly conveyed by another entity to the HOA. So that's what you call the concept of a, a wild deed, okay? We, are, we still have legal ownership because the entity that actually transferred the property had no right to do it. So we still, we still own it. To the extent the HOA wants to recognize that mistake and just give us the deed back, he would also be in favor of that. I would say have them. It's, right. it's yeah. This is as, for you then. Yeah. It's merely for purposes of correcting the improper chain of title right now with respect to that little piece of. It's it's a it's a paperwork exercise. It's paper okay. trail. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, in addition to Lot Two Fifteen, century speaking about that, uh, am I allowed to uh, ascertain the supervisors on another? section of lot two fifteen or uh chance to speak with Mr. S on the way in. And I'd like to ask the township supervisors for permission to have Mr. S attend an HOA board meet at Stonecrop Village. He seems to be very knowledgeable in the situation that we have with our I don't know what kind of pond you want to call it. The retention basin. The, well, la the lake will be gone, if you will. Well, that's the yeah. other. Uh, okay. lake will be gone. You got a pond that's supposed to be for our fire suppression system, which is really a construction basin. That's all it is right now. All the silt and debris and concrete and all the other garbage that's come down through the drain system and drained into that pond is in the bottom of that. Landmark refusing to clear it out and clean it up. And according to Forest Property Management, they are totally obligated to do that. So we're we're in a, a situation here where Lake Will Be Gone is becoming Lake Will Be Forest because nobody can get in there and mow the grass anymore it it's now two and a half feet high with weeds and, and crap in it and it, it's a mess it was never that way we had beautiful grass that we could do things on and trees that were there and they were transplanted trees most of them died so they were obligated to replace those trees we're in a situation where land all they want to do is get back in the and come to you folks to get their bond on I certainly hope you treat people sitting on the board. Do not treat that the man got money don't think it's true. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if, if I can mm -hmm. uh, just quickly I'll try and be as brief as possible. But you know, I think it was two weeks ago. The township received notice from a resident that construction activities were ongoing there on a particular day. And I did investigate that and determined the developer had his site contractor come out to address really what was the conservation district's last construction inspection report. And all the items then were subsequently reinspected by the conservation district in addition to itself, found to be acceptable. Construction is done there. As a result, the developer just submitted today, I think it was, the notice of termination related to the NPDS permit. This project's been around for so long, there was an original NPDS permit, but every time they went to renew it, things changed. The NPDS permit includes post a post-construction stormwater management plan. That plan, I think, was amended no less than two times. The sad thing is, when the township approved the original subdivision plan, which has stormwater facilities on it, you know, that's what you think you're going to get. But when the developer still owns the property and he has to renew the, the NPDS permit, they can augment the stormwater management system to address the NPDS requirement. 
And that's exactly what happened here with this open space lot that's now lake won't be gone. Will be gone. Will be gone. Will never um, be that gone. that area was utilized by the developer because he still owns that land and he converted it to an infiltration. He uh, was forced to by the DEP. Correct. Mm -hmm. The DEP standards change. They have to renew the permit. They got to meet the new standard. They find a way to, to meet the standard and they change it. The sad thing is the township's not informed of those changes. The homeowners yep. association or anybody lives around there is not informed of those changes, but it's still the developer's property to do so. And he's required under the state law. law. The landmark so, spent a million dollars make a mess of something that was beautiful. Well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Uh, the regulations are what they are. They found a way to make the regulations, and they are subject to so that. So just to be clear, that land meets the regulations for a Omar Basin. Yes, the MPDS okay. aspect of stormwater. Yes. Okay. And so those lands are still in that, yeah, that yes. particular open space and lot. Can, yes. Can we can we address it? Well, functionally, I think yeah. Sure, sure. Um, but long term, you know, as part of the MPDS permit and that's closed out, and I think it was actually reported before, there's a stormwater operation and maintenance agreement that mm -hmm. every property in there is subject to compliance with. Mm -hmm. And it does get a little tricky because there's that permit and those improvements and they're recorded in the courthouse and you're to maintain and operate them but in their in design condition in perpetuity. The sad thing is the township is really not part of that NPDS permit. Neither is DEP insofar as enforcement. So it, it's a real gray area that the DEP hasn't figured out how things are going to be regulated and monitored. Um, and has, or, it, has it been certified by Kirk County Conservation? The construction has, the NPDS mm -hmm. permit was, and the modifications thereafter. But, and they're going to certify and proceed with closing out the NPDS permit. To to that end though, Chuck, what Burke's conservation is reviewing is very different, I think, than what you and the homeowners are expecting out of that space. That yeah. was originally an open field. Origi with trees. And that's what I'm saying. Yes. Originally it was presented as a different area. There were two stormwater swales that went through there, but the rest was grass. Now they amended the permit, put amended soils in. And I would have to look at the requirements for, you know, how many times a year that's supposed to be mowed and maintained, because um, that's on the latest plans. What I think needs to happen here is, because there's no communication between the landmark and the and the homeowners association, all the documentation the township just received today for that permit closed out, including all the recorded plans, all the recorded agreements. I think copies of those should be. Provided but, to the homeowners. But, but let me ask you, the landmark charge to premium for every one of those. Well, that, that, let me ask you this question, Chuck. Could the township fire a plan modification through that change? I can't answer that. I don't know the legal ramifications of that. Well, let's, if that's something that would be within our purview, let's you know, look and see. The, the township has their standards, and then the state can see they have their. Yeah. Put it how the but two, if, if they had to modify it, if that's well, something we can they, do. They modify it and they re-record well, new information. With, with us specifically. So if they make changes. They, well, no well, well it, to that township approves their MPDS permit. No, but it's still a deviation from what the township approved in the original plan. No doubt. Colin, can you look into that? Because for, for the folks but, in Stonecroft, they were given an apple. And then through the course oh, I, of changing I, I, things, I, I, they now have a hard with a rotten limb. I, I yeah. fully understand because now it's now it's not open space. The swim on yeah. even if they come back in, you know the town is well, well, going to deny that and and therefore negate what was required right. by the state. Yeah. No, no, but my question is one of following the proper procedure. And that's, I know, and that's, that's the breakdown the in the whole right. NPDS permits. What's the remedy going to be? Well, the, the question that I have is if we yes, we have been submitted here, Chuck, we probably won't have the legal standing to deny it, but is there something that we, we can maybe require as part of our things that make it a little less of a, a, a giant open 
wound on. Like I said, every one of those homeowners around that lake will be gone. Paid a premium price for their well, lot. Well, well, so well, in that, well, in that, in, in that, in that, in that case, those property owners should honestly retain counsel and determine if they have legal, legal rights yeah. and remedies for that misrepresentation. Yeah, not, not okay. the exact term, but that's kind of bait and switch. You're going to have these wonderful views, and then they, and uh, and that that only recently happened. Okay, so. Yeah. How many people? How many? How many properties around that? Well, common space. Yeah, say Chuck's got now, the plan. Chuck knows. This is this is another interesting aspect of this thing. So, this happened to be one of the plans that they submitted, and I think people saying, but it is called a not as built plan. The intention, though, is that really an acronym for notice of termination. But a little odd, nonetheless. I'd like to do not subdivision plans and not yeah, this and not saying that. that it's, it's odd. About. So this is a copy I wanted to give. You know, I printed it out today. This is one of the documents that came in that submission. Um, you know, so there's a number of homes that 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 are around, and they even identify it now as an infiltration base. Um, I was going to say oh, there's yeah. 15 to 20 there. Yeah. So how, how much? How much? Or or was the was the charge? Was the purchase price? I'd have to check. Was it every home? I was paid a premium. I mean, I paid sixteen thousand dollars more for my premium a lot. And I'm wow. not going to nail wow. And now and now and now and now I've paid sixty five thousand dollars for premium. And and now instead of abutting open space, you your backyard abuts the bar basement. Yeah. 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 yeah, we get it's an street of it we get Canadian I, we get I rec I recommend that you talk to your other fellow neighbors and seek counsel. That's why I have seen this board right here to approve that gentleman right there to attend our HOA meeting that he might be able to help fill in some of well, the gaps. Well, so, so place. to be clear, the, the only remedy the township may have is the requirement that, that they should have obtained a plan modification approval. So Colin, just, and I have to, and I have to research that issue. I don't know whether we can require that or not. Reading between the lines, I think it's less about the town not, taking it, direct action and more about Chuck explaining this situation clearly so that a room of people yeah. understands it. Yeah, and they know the so obligation. No, no have to make plans that show yeah. the design condition that the maintain. Now, I think it's more so DEP made this change without notifying us, and it's done in. Almost every minute. I think we should find them three hundred dollars a day for they straighten. Mm -hmm. And you can fast forward through Todd. Yep. Yeah, we up in Love yeah, thanks for our great. Oh, is that great in quotations? Berks County is, 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 a, is delegated by the DEP to take on certain tasks. That can include new initiatives and yes, just yeah. 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 And before they did that, everything was fine. But it was it's only been since, since Berks County told them to make the changes. It was the whole MDDS permit program problematic from this standpoint as well as many, many others. They just totally blew it. Yeah. They took out all of the soil down to a clay base. And then they put, and in put soil. a bunch of mixture in there. And of course, the water permeates down that 20 inches of mixture that they put in. And then it stopped. It goes nowhere because it's all clay under there. We didn't have that problem before. We had a two nice drain field that drained right into the retention pond. The conservation district, through their reports, and I don't know if you're getting any of their inspections. We're getting no. No. It, only because it goes to the developer and it goes to the township. Yes. But the conservation district. When this change happened, 
they went out and inspected after a rain event, and they determined that one of the underdrain valves were open. The valves are not to be open unless absolutely necessary for me. The reason they're not open, those underdrain pipes are to make sure water infiltrates into the ground and versus just run off through an underdrain pipe back into surface water. So the conservation district required them to shut the valve. I think there was a break in a pipe too that was required to be repaired. Mm -hmm. So the under drains were completely isolated. They went out after another rain event and convinced themselves that indeed the infiltration basin was functioning as it required and infiltrating. Uh, I also, they also, the conservation district knew this would become an issue and prepared a number. I did you? Again, it's an infiltration basin. It takes time for it yeah. to infiltrate. The time period, I'm not sure what, what parameters they were used, but it's like 72 hours because you want to slow drain into the subsoil to help promote groundwater recharge. These are the state regulations. Can we ask them to come back out and do another inspection? Because he's right, it's not draining. I'm not I'm not right on but, but, it, but I'm across the street from it. And I can see we joke every it, we joke as we're eating dinner, but you know, we, we, right, we should take our boat, we should take our boat over when, here and when, stock it with crowd. I mean we, we joke it. When did you take that picture? Uh, it doesn't have to rain very hard. You know? No, it's, it's, it's yeah. very flat. But wasn't but but, but my my point is, was it there three days later? Right. Because if it wasn't there three days later, and then it's then it's working as as designed. Oh, it stayed there for eight it, years. Yeah. Week and a half. But yes. how many rain events occurred in that week and a half? Well, I mean, that occurred your right. summer. So, uh, not not the past. Well, the past couple of months have been I, pretty we, wet. The conservation just participated in concerns of residents the way that basin right. I have complete document of all the tests that were done, all the certifications were done, the design that was done, and I will share with you so you can see what was done as part of the design. And then after in construction with the conservation district reviewed and inspected. Yeah. They're at the point they're saying it's functioning as it was intended. If we have an extreme storm event, I mean, that's designed to only infiltrate 1.2 inches of rain. If we have extreme rain events or back to back rain events and there's more volume there, it is going to take longer to drain and be more. Yeah. Assuming the infiltration continues to function as it was when it was tested and the that's design they, was done. That's why they left the valve open and took the handle open. Those things be closed. Yeah, I think you know, it's supposed to be closed. Right. I just said that's why they took the handle away and left it open. Originally. Oh, the yeah. Right. Yeah. I think going back to this point, um, I don't want to overpromise Chuck, but I think really from the township standpoint, we won't release bond money unless they meet the actual requirements. We can't withhold it if they have, but to Colin's point, if there was a, a say bait and switch again moment on you guys were paying uh, a premium for we that. We don't need to go any, we don't need to go any further. Yeah. I've, said, I've said what I said. Okay. You, you can or cannot retain counsel. Thank you all. Appreciate the time you've given me. Thank right. you, Dan. Uh, Thank you, Dan. Okay. And what, and what can we do about? <laughs> well, the wet pond. The that's that's for you, I believe. This was for you. This was for the township, absolutely. But if I can turn another one if you want them to have it. But I can do whatever. If you want to take it, go ahead, Dan. If not, leave it here. Is that a a public record? Oh, you said you just printed another one. It was submitted to the town. Well, okay. How about how about this, Dan? If you leave this one here, we'll print you another one and mail it to you. 
through. Okay, so you, so you can't you can't have can't have the as built. Yeah, yeah, it's so, not as. Well, it's it's protected by federal copyright. Well, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I thought you said you weren't getting the information. <laughs> okay. That's, 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 this is. But, were, but these are different. Those are no, those are those are as. Don't have that. You, you can, what, yeah. Once, yeah. once it's yeah. recorded, Dan, you can get a copy. Put put a right to know in. That'll put a right to know request in. That'll cover it. No, you're not. It would not. It would not be subject to dissemination under a right to know request. It would only be subject to inspection because it hasn't been publicly reported yet. So it's still uh, protected by federal okay. copyright. You can come okay. in and look okay. at it. When, when does it get publicly Here. recorded? Once the it's part of the notice of termination okay. process. Okay. Once the conservation district is got happy with all the documentation, then it will get recorded. Yeah. Some things already have been recorded, though. Maintenance agreements, uh, the original PCSM plan, certain things already have. This is part of, you know, some, some engineers do it at the beginning. So yeah. Well, can we go back to my question? Do I have the supervisor's permission to contact Mr. Hess? I mean, Chuck, do you have any objections to I, I don't because I feel it's it's information that if the residents and the homeowners association would know the parameters and they know what they're dealing with. It's a lot of disinformation I'm suspecting. A lot of we don't know why it was changed. We don't know why it's performing the way it's performing. So, you know, I just, the cost for that, I don't know if the township should bear that or if the HOA should. Just for my own for now. Well, and then where would you want to meet? Would you want to meet here at the township? No, we could meet in our headquarters. Yes. So as a question, would, would the HOA be willing to? Well, first I need to know the township supervisor. Yeah, because yeah, I would kids, yeah, yeah. Say, so, I would I would say conditionally, um yeah. I'm okay with it as long as the HOA is willing to, to reimburse the engineer for the, the act of going out there. No to take yeah. back. Yeah. So I mean I'll I'll make a motion to authorize Chuck to, Okay. I mean right. you're ready, so I'll make a motion to authorize Chuck to attend an HOA meeting to discuss the Infiltration I mean, basin in an, an informative session, right. um, pending the approval of the HOA for reimbursement of costs. Hi, Peter. Hi, Irene. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my next. Other, my other question: All the other things that are happening on. The additional street lights and anything else that's up in the air. So the, the, the developer closing out the NPDS permit. The next step for him would be to close out the project. Or the initiative by the commission as built and request. Then my obligation is to bring the project to the board, go on to the site. Everything that's going to record his plan, uh, not the MPDF permit, not the uh, PCSM plan, but recorded plan is in place. Landscaping, you know, trees, outlet structures. What about the lighting? What's that? What about the lighting? Part of the street light. It, it's covered under the financial security. I always look to make sure the lights are energized and functioning. Okay. And but they if they released. are not, then that would be a list, punch list item for the developer to address, or the letter of credit funds would be held for that proportion. You you do know that the landmark lease the lights. That yep, does not matter yeah, no matter how the lights are there, as long as they're there, they function. Furnished. Word that everyone has. Furnished. Yeah. And leased in our name. Okay. So you're making lease payments on the lights? Yes. Do, do you make also uh, pay for the electricity usage for the lights? Mm -hmm. So they're two separate costs for the lights. I get four electric bills per month okay. for the development. Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Um, well, 
-hmm. street light. Yep. They supplied four street lights so all week. That's day. probably a long pen. That's on the top, on the top of the hill. Phase four. Okay, so some change there then. Again, whatever arrangements the developer made, yeah, he, he sure made. Um, Find out how he how they leased those lights under the HOA's name without the HOA. Because he, he was controlling because the HOA. Controlling HOA. That's so he leased them. So it cost he us. Turned the HOA. Over. Is this a this is Civil the way it's done? Yeah, you're happy. I mean, it's, it's nineteen hundred dollars a month. Well, that lease probably covers you know replacement or maintenance of the fixtures, old, I would assume. So that's what you're paying for in that regard. If you owned them outright, light went out. Perfect. We own four. four. Well, yeah. that might be something to go back to the PPNL and not PPNL or and, and, and purchase it, purchase them outright. They want some good. Would you want to give up that kind of money? I, I don't know what kind of money you're talking about. Well, like, what's, like 20 it depends, month, so. well, it would depend on the term of the lease. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a forever lease. There's no way of getting out of it. Well, that's what you just tell them. We ain't stopping okay. that bill. I'm going to take the lights back. Come, come, come. Then you buy new lights, put them in. Yeah. Well, I want to strip all the wire in. Oh. Well, and everything they, else. They, I don't know that they would have rights to the wiring conduit. That's the lease said so. You got to read the lease. You got to see what's in there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dan. It's been a fun night. It has. It's been a, it's been full of adventure. Uh, we're going to skip the next one. I don't think we have anything on the emergency management report. Uh, the next item is the Creekview Dairy Operations at 952 Prop 419. Engineer Hess has received the as-built plans and issued a review letter. BCC did uh, an inspection on August 22nd. We're just waiting for the report. And I think we did get the report from the Conservation District. I think there are uh, an email maybe it's about the as-built plans in the NOT. Um, so they're, they're work, again, they're working on closing out their MBDS permit I did receive updated as built plans, and I need to get a uh, letter issued for that. So it's coming to an end. Things things are progressing. Okay. But the conservation district is comfortable with the construction there again, just like <laughs> in Stonecroft built. The government was closing out that NPDS from next step would be closing out. Okay, uh, next is to move general fund money from the money market into the checking account. Or do we have an amount that can offer as you move? Um, oh, it's like 200 and so, okay. Yeah. Um, that'd be sufficient in a motion yeah. if I just said that the ARPA fund move the ARPA fund. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'll make a motion to, or I'll wait until Sue's. Not a motto unless Melissa, if you're going to jot that down. No, no worries. I'm going to make a motion. So if you can jot it down since yeah, she's occupied. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to authorize the movement of the ARP money out of the money market back into the checking account. I don't know the amount. This is whatever the ARP. Paper done initially so that we could use liquid fuel. fuel. Correct. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Okay. Next item is about the culverts. Um, I always mix these up in my head. Is it, It's uh, Reichert and Marion Drive. South no. that are done? No, north. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so those two are are completed or just about near completed. Yep. Um, and then and they've started work on uh, Sheridan. Sheridan. Sheridan Road, the call was installed Tuesday. Perfect. And I plan on taking one drive over there tonight. Uh, 
So I'll be finishing that up and then we move on to Mary and Drive. Yeah. But can you stand up? Yeah, if you're going to talk, I'm put, sorry, put but the mic. The Orange Corner Macadam, uh, uh, the Riker Road to, to uh, no Sher Sharon Road. Sharon it's Road, yeah, Sharon They're Road back to. But uh, but I talked the crew in to make again a little rough uh, that uh, the local yeah. traffic can so, cross. The road will be back to the stone and the culvert. The road closure signs will remain in place, but in essence, off the record, local road Especially the farmer. The milk truck. Yeah, the milk truck, the feed truck. And, and then the plan is to move on to Marion Drive South next week. Um, we do have a little snap through there then, um, with Med Ed. But I think I think I have enough direction from the solicitor to work through that. Um, but basically, MedEd, because of the, the crane operation, the boom of the crane has to be a minimum distance from an energizer. MedEd standard is 10 feet. The crane the safety standard is 20. So we met with MedEd, and they had determined they can de-energize that section wow. of the line. And from both ends, they basically just disconnect where our call is so the crane can operate. But they initially requested $4,400 cost for that. Now, the pole is within the right-of-way for the survey that's on the site. The facility is in the township. If I'm not mistaken, that's the case. You can request slash require them to go to the road. Just got that feedback today, tonight. That has been interesting. So there's point of contact with the field guys. And there's somebody else that schedules them. So I was told they don't talk in terms. I have to call the other person that I did today and a message. I want to get a commitment to have this work done for September 19th, Tuesday, because that's when the contractor is anticipating they will be setting that last call. So I want that as commitment to that time frame before I hit on they may mm -hmm. just push this down the road and not be able to accommodate That's possible. So I want to take it in step. That's the latest on that. I have been trying to keep everyone updated on progress and legal issues out there. Um, if anything can happen, I will say the positive thing. I'm sure there's an opportunity. Right in front of the school. Very fine. I believe um, I believe this one will look perfect. Even here. better. I, I I don't believe uh there's there isn't gonna be a hump there and then isn't gonna be a dip. I don't think. We me and we, me and the contractor was talking about it today. Good. I said if there's a hump there, their the cars are gonna go airborne. <laughs> we we had on all the all the culverts to date, we modified the profile of the roadway over the culverts with the new side to lessen impact. So, Which also helps to reduce some of the pavement um, mm -hmm. limits um, so, and guidance too. If it's not up high, yep. we don't have to see. Yep. Are you concerned about that? Can't you just tell them to shut it all off and look at it? It's done. <laughs> Unfortunately, if something like this happens, their policy is to issue an in before they'll even schedule it. just won't pay. And, well... <laughs> it has to be done on that date. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, well, I don't want to get too pushy. I want to try and take baby steps, get commitments, and then they want the payment before the work. They and they do. Yeah. And uh, and farmers didn't take their friends down yet on on, on Marion Drive. Uh, south, but I did talk to him yesterday and today. So, <laughs> but you gotta get them to do the work too. Though. Well, so that's going good. Further in the agenda, we do have a pay application for that. Yeah. Any uh, any other questions, comments about work completed to date? No. What do you think it's enough to go no, yeah. quick too? It looks yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. That you're aware. Yeah. Little ways to keep up the things that we're working yeah. through yeah. and. Uh, all for the better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next is the temporary construction easements and permanent drainage easements for the culvert replacements. Yeah, I'm uh, still working through that. I have an appointment next week. The man back east can tough to nail down. Um, and actually, the contract has been working a little faster than I have. Um, the only one I all reached out to again was the individual in Vermont. I have not got a return of the call, so I'm not encouraged by that. But uh, nonetheless, I'll keep up the, the good fight here and looking towards getting all the property owners to agree to those easements. And it's really for, you know, in the future so yeah. the township can get into each of these calls yeah. for maintenance, removal of debris, what have you. Okay. Uh, then we don't have anything else on that. The next item is the Riker culvert. There is uh, an application for payment and a change order. Yeah, so this would be change order number one. Um, it covers a reduction in the amount of guide rail at, at Rikers Road, which saved us $6,500. But in paving Marion Drive North, the estimated tonnage of asphalt uh, was a, over what we had anticipated. Uh, I think they actually got a little thicker, so you got a little heavier road there. Um, and that was uh, an additional cost of $4,500. So the net is a decrease of uh, $1,949.15. I do have a change order here that would amend the contract accordingly. I would ask for a motion and action uh, to authorize the chairman to sign that change order. Do you guys want to make a motion? Motion to authorize uh, the chairman to sign the change order with respect for the Riker Road uh, culvert. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. In conjunction with the change order, now that we've amended the contract, we can actually we have the contractor's first pay application. I'll note he's almost completed half the project already. Uh, but the pay application is for $241,287.03. And again, I provided a recommendation letter dated August 30th regarding both the change order and this pay application. And I'm asking for a motion uh, to issue payment to the contractor. I'll make a motion to issue payment for the set amount for the culverts. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Thank you. That's, what that's was the overage? Point. Do you know what the overage was from our original plans to what it's ended up being? Overage in what? In cost. Um, well, the, the, to date, the change order is actually a decrease. But I think he means we were originally doing this in house. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, oh it, that it's I don't a, know. I don't know what the best yeah, it's a pretty substantial it's amount. In house. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. That would have been something to talk about. Oh no, we in house budget. We, we had a we had a little bit of a discussion around that. And I want to say the original in house budget for that was close to four hundred thousand. Yeah. So it, it went up five hundred and five. Yeah. We're now at five hundred and 86 yeah it was it was not an instant uh you're paying insignificant amount rates yeah 
that, that'll be pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Next is Bollinger Road, fill overflow matter. Um, I know from the updates that uh, we're still trying to get the, the one property owner to sign that agreement. Um, I know there was some discussion batted around amongst engineer and, and legal around uh, somebody from the township reaching out to um, Mr. Sonnen. Um, if we need to, I can do that or Irene, do you want to? Okay, yeah. fair. Um, Myself or Jim can make contact with him if that would be beneficial, but uh, we want to, we obviously want to mend the fence, bridge the gap, et cetera, with, with the homeowner about the, the matter of the, the concrete debris filling down. So, we, so we've, ar we've already, already discussed this matter publicly. Yeah. I don't think there's any need to rehash okay. the fact. It is an executive session matter because litigation has been threatened. So I recommend we talk about it. Okay. Fair. Uh, at this point, unless we feel the need for executive session. I'll move on to the next. That's on the agenda. That's on the agenda? Okay. Uh, guide rails. Okay. So guide rails, Ballinger Road and Hickory Road. Yes. Ch question for you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. um, we had previously tried to get Hickory Road a piece of guide rail when we did that project, but we actually couldn't get any guide rail companies to even come out and give us an estimate. It was too small of a project. We're wondering if we would be able to get something out there, like Potentially on, on 10 bid, or if when we have the guide rail contractor come out for the culverts, if they would be willing to take a look at Bollinger Road, Hickory Road, and a, a small section of William Penn Boulevard. Yeah, the small there. section heading out of town. On the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, the yeah. Left, yeah. Out, yeah. 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 Okay. Watch. Yeah. Um, so all three locations. All yeah. three locations. Okay. Um, so the guide rail contractor that is working as a subcontractor to services, you know, I could reach out to him. Mm. Uh, we did meet with him and actually we have, uh, should be meeting with them again because we're reviewing each location as we go yeah. to try and reduce the guide rail because we did save some on the guide um, So I anticipate now that the backfill is done, well, actually, no, we'll probably, we'll probably wait to hit Sharon and Aaron get this out here in the first, as soon as that other box probably gets in. Yeah. yeah. So at that time, and I'll, I'll give them a heads up, um, we'll hit these sites. Okay. So I just need to know where these locations are. Butch knows where they are. Butch, Butch knows where they are. And if not, I can I can connect with you so, guys and come out. Yeah. You know where the one is on Hickory. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can we can mark it on a Google map too. That's that's easy enough. Perfect. Um and then so once I get give it a heads up. My thought is I believe they could be a co star. Okay. So, in so that we wouldn't case, need quotes then. we could um possibly purchase the guide. Okay. Um, so once I know the locations, I can also verify with PennDOT local rep that we can use liquid fuel for it. Fuel. Um, I think it comes. Oh, hey, good segue. Um, hmm. the next yeah. yes, yeah. Um, so yes, we'll take care of the guide rail at those three locations. that are under item number four. four. I'll just jump ahead to item 25. Marion Drive, yeah, I had submitted to PennDOT to get that project uh, mm -hmm. blessed for using liquid fuels funds. You know, the question remains, I think, we're under any bidding threshold. We would just need to get three quotes. Okay. And then we could proceed with... So, I don't know what your schedule is. We're getting that work done. We could wait to hear back from PennDOT, or you could authorize me, subject to receiving PennDOT's blessing to use liquid fuels I'd say to solicit that. quote. And hopefully, I could get three quotes before the next meeting, 
and then you could take action. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. I'll make a motion to authorize the engineer um, subject to PennDOT approval uh, to solicit quotes for the Marion Drive project. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is road signs. Uh, we had somebody steal, what, what was it, a um, da dangerous intersection ahead? Yeah, somebody stole a dangerous intersection ahead hmm. sign. So I'd like to get the board's approval to order a replacement one of those signs as well as um, six crosswalk aheads and three children ahead. Paul Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Can slow down. Let's walk ahead. Sure. Yeah. I'll I'll circulate what the options are for the signs and just let me know. Sure. But the goal here would be to put strategically a couple of signs on each side of Main Street, warning of intersections, and then for the yeah. ones that are closest to Water Street, put the the children crossing. Them. Now, uh, Butch, did you ever get uh, information about renting the line painting stuff? Butch, okay, Butch, okay. if you want, I'll give the update. Otherwise, you gotta gotta go to the microphone, my friend. Copenhagen Township has a has a line painter, which is up on the shelf. Yeah, they said <laughs> <laughs> they want to do it themselves. But like uh, he said, it's up on the shelf yet, and they're short of help like like everybody else. <laughs> One guy, and uh, and uh, they'll do it uh, when when they have time. <laughs> and uh, but he was uh, it, it's Butch Pike who I was yeah, talking yeah. to, uh, and uh, he he said. Uh, uh, when you go all the way up Stasburg Road, uh, up to Monet, uh, uh, up there at uh, uh, Mancino's Pizza, two years ago, two or two and a half years ago, they painted, uh, they got an outfit from, from Ephrata somewhere. Um, uh, Peter knows uh, what it is. And he said that looks like new yet, but it's very expensive. I think it's uh, thermal plastic. It's thermal plastic or methyl factory yeah. material versus just your your, your standard water based yeah. white. Yeah. The, the, like the, hot paint, the hot coat stuff is really nice. Yeah, it but lasts forever. But if we put it on most of our roads, it's not going to work because they're so jagged. Yeah, yeah, I would not put that down yeah. on curated tape. Yeah. yeah. So that's what he was telling me. Uh, uh, he has a fellow that works at the corner Weiser school that I helped him on, uh, but uh, he left. He left uh, Albuquerque, and if he can get a, if he can get him, they want to do some themselves. But it'll be late in the season till we get our stuff. I mean, that's that's okay. I mean, if yeah. we know it's yeah. going to get done, we don't mind waiting. Yeah. So. Yeah, she just and, and, and and I I didn't call pricing to it. Uh, I'm yeah. sure if we yeah. buy the pain, they will use us recently. Yeah. So I would say let Butch know that we're interested and we appreciate the help. Just let us know what we need and when we can fit in the schedule that'll save us the hassle of having to rent something and then having to figure out I, how to use it. Whether so. one one you know, his guy runs a machine. Yeah. Because I don't know how to run. But yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> That would be that would be the preferred alternative. So if they're willing, even if it's later in the year, to help us do the the line striping on the, the crosswalk so that it's the zebra pattern, then that that would be awesome. Whatever. Okay. Thanks, Butch. Thanks. Uh, next, speaking of line painting, uh, we did get one quote back from Berg's Traffic about line painting for uh, eighteen thousand seven hundred twenty-four dollars and ninety-eight cents. Uh, this is for zones five and six. The secretaries <laughs> are working on getting. Uh, two additional quotes, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we just gotta yeah. give, give him. Uh, 
uh, uh, Butch told me that uh, if uh, if like Les Robertsonia plays uh, with Beat Postar, we would need three. What's the place in Robertsonia? The one we call. Are they are they co-stars? I don't think so. I can call them. Yeah, because I mean, if if they are, um, that was actually the the place that Kelly referred to me that she said there's other municipalities that she's talked to that they use that really? name. they love it oh they're well then they're, well, they're uh, co-starred certified oh yeah yeah i did see that on here. okay so cool. and and to that point i i did submit that quote mm -hmm. and the information again to pen dot just to get a blessing yeah we can use the fuel pump for that so i haven't heard back from them on that either i sent it to it at the same time so do we if we want to just move forward with it and see if we can pay for it out of liquid fuels, otherwise we just pay for it out of general. Uh, again, that way, maybe you could make a motion subject to uh, PEN dot approval. From PEN dot, you could fund uh, could, uh, well, I mean, even even if we're not using liquid fuels, we want to paint the lines. Right. So, right. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. and, I, and I can't imagine that they would not yeah. offer. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. make a motion. Uh, do you want to add something before I do uh, Jack Ponzi uses them, and they're well pleased with okay. with their operation. Okay, well, in that case, I'll make a motion to uh, engage Burke's traffic and line painting for the sum of eighteen thousand seven hundred twenty-four dollars and ninety-eight cents for painting zones five and six within Marion Township. Second. We'll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jen. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is the building, uh, demolition proposed new building. Uh, we had a meeting on August 10th with the Olson Design Group, who has submitted a proposal amount uh, totaling $9,750, plus uh, expenses up to $975, totaling $10,725. Uh, this would be to draft the architectural piece of a potential new building which would, could, would and could be used for securing grant funding around both that design function as well as the actual construction of the building. Um, I think this is the necessary next step in trying to figure out what we're doing with this. Um, that, that sum of money would be the design work, the initial engineering around that, and uh, a series of interviews and surveys with board members, members of the community, everybody that is potentially a stakeholder in Marion Township's community building to get uh, needs assessed properly. So I'll make a motion to move forward with the Olson Design Group's proposal and authorize the expenditure of $10,725. Second. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Uh, Irene. <clears throat> Aye. Jim. Aye. Just a side note, too. Uh, I mean, if you would, that'd be great. I'm not sure how quick get on this but there is a round of potential funding that's coming out i think it's called rac e r a c p um that might be appropriate for this building project the program has not been publicized yet but it's typically an annual program and due out here in over november so the timing might be right because you know, having a design really helps dictate cost for, for the design. That information, as you mentioned, is going to be used for the plan application. So the timing might be it depends on how quickly he gets through um, this concept. Is not yeah. Okay. But that on the radar. Now that we have the approval, let's let them know, turn them loose, and see if there's any way that they can put. Uh, do I need to sign? Yes, you would sign. Um, it. Okay. Well, before I pass it down, I'll sign it now. Um, Kim, you had said that there was a potential for thank you um, LSA grants as well under the building. Yeah. Does that only cover design? Work?
you know, I, I'm aware of the LSA program does not involve the ins and outs. Um, but yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Some of the county. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you have so, somebody there to help you? Wash your showers. She helps municipalities for free. Great. Start up the drive any Yeah. Yeah. I figured I'd speak into the mic. Um, <laughs> for yeah, that statewide, the only thing to consider is if you are awarded funds for a certain phase of the project, you need. I'll back up a little bit. There's a long wait time between applying and finding out if you've been awarded. And then if you want to apply for both the Berks and the statewide for the construction, for example, you'd have to wait until you heard about the statewide results. So the Berks County results always come out a couple months earlier, and then you have to wait for the CFA meeting to announce whether you also were awarded for the statewide. So that's the only caveat is splitting the project into phases. You don't want to spend any of the money you've been awarded for that construction until you find out if you've maybe gotten lucky in one vote, if that makes sense. Yeah, in other words, you don't want to incur costs until you get it. Exactly. A notice of a grant because they won't cover the money you already spent. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. And, and we it, apply for two different projects in the same grant. Yes. You can also apply for as many projects. So if you have um, and demolition and oh, we yeah. we figure that out. Yeah. We tend to like we actually <laughs> if we actually got grants for that, we'd figure that out. And again, I'd be happy, happy to. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to a Coleman tent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That depends on what time of year it is. Um, okay. Next up is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we did email an updated list of addresses to Bill Praga. Um, at this point, do we have a draft agreement that we've no. seen? No. Okay. Yeah. We gotta. We just gotta continue pestering that, I guess, because we, we can't really do anything else until we have that. With the... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is about the uh, keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Other municipalities are interested in participating in the amendment that we were proposing. Uh, there is a meeting yeah. scheduled in September for that. Jim and I will be present for that. That's 23rd. the 23rd, 21st? 21st, 21st thank you. Um, they need form, yeah. So we'll, we'll be there. Um, next is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the PSAT stuff, just I'm going to bundle these together. We received a series of ballots for various election of trustees. This was the unemployment compensation, the municipal pension, health insurance. Uh, there were only two candidates, and you had to pick two. It was Jack Hines and Mervyn Mateer. So we submitted those ballots back as filled in for those two candidates. Uh, the Berks County Public Works Association annual trade show is being held on October 5th, 2023 at the Olake Fairgrounds. Uh, Michael Palak from Recon Construction Services will be giving a presentation about road recycling. Um, equipment skills rodeos will be held. Registration is required before September 25th. At the workshop, we made a motion to authorize supervisors, office staff, and road crew to attend if interested. Next is the Berks County Association of Township Officials 2023 Convention. Uh, this is on October 19th, 2023, from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the OA Fair Center. Reservations must be made by October 1st. There is no charge. We made a motion at the workshop to authorize supervisors, elected auditors, office staff, and tax collectors to attend. Uh, next item is the 2024 proposed budget. Uh, as I indicated at the workshop, I need everybody's, uh, I'll call it your, your wish lists for that lack of a better term, but the items that you think we need to focus on or you'd like to see us focus on. And then as I've done the past couple of years, I'll run the numbers and see where I can make things fit where we think we can reduce costs based on trends year over year over year, or where we're expecting large increases like in cost of electricity, cost of gas, et cetera, and see where we have to move things around to make things fit and what things have to stay and what things have to go. Okay. 
that's all. And then hopefully for next meeting, I can I can fold all those together and then I can start creating a draft budget and then we'll do what we did the past couple of years. We'll have a working session where we go line by line up on the screen and discuss where we feel things need to increase or decrease. Okay, uh, next is the advertisement for road crew and the assistant secretary positions. Um, unfortunately, Melissa will not be with us forever. She has to go back to college at some point. So we're going to need to craft a road crew ad and an assistant secretary ad for Indeed. Um, I know we previously posted an advert in the paper for the road crew. We could probably take some of that and reuse bits of it. Same thing with the previous advertisement for secretary based on some tweaks and changes. Lots. lots of tweaks. Um, but uh, that's a big yeah. <laughs> Well, obviously, if you have people that are potentially good fits for road crew and you know they're interested, please have them come in and talk to Sue. Um, so I'll make a motion to authorize the secretaries to prepare and advertise uh, job posting positions on Indeed for road crew and assistant secretary. Roll Peter. Hi. Hi, Rain. Hi, Jim. Hi. I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, since we are going to break for an executive session, uh, I'll do the public or not public comments, excuse me, the supervisor's comments real quick, and then we'll effectively dismiss the meeting so that we can do an executive session and then adjourn. Um, I don't have any additional comments other than I didn't get a chance to call anybody from Dutch Valley Foods about the ball field. I'll okay. maybe try and do that this upcoming week. I think that would be a, a neat, simple thing that we could do that kind of fits along with your suggestion of defense. Yeah. Um, Irene, do you have any comments? No. Oh, yes, yeah, yep. you forgot about that. Jump down to that. Hey, the police report, um, <laughs> it's, it's sideways. So, uh, no, it's okay. So there were 14 citations issued for uh, 11 traffic stops. Uh, really not a whole lot else that happened. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate that quiet month, other than the citations, which were higher than normal, they had 41 total patrol hours, 60 hours of time worked total, and a total of 682 miles of Marion Township Road driven. So as always, thanks to our police for being out there and, and driving around and keeping things safe. Um, Lawrence already left, but uh, thanks for coming out for that. Uh, Jim, do you have any comments? Only comment I have is I found out I found out today that we have another internet provider in the, in the township, uh, T-Mobile. Yeah, they'll do five G. Sent me sent me out a notice that it's now available at my address, so I assume it's most of me. Yeah, it's it's five G. It's so essentially it's cellular internet for your house. Um, but I just thought everybody ought to know about it in case yeah. they're dissatisfied with their current. Depending on what your your current offering from Comcast, it might be a direct competitor. But if you're in one of the the higher bandwidth offerings, it's not going to be able to. So uh, Irene actually did have a comment. I apologize, Irene. Okay. I thought you said you didn't. I I, I just want to say thank you, especially to Sue and Melissa, for uh, fielding all the phone calls and all the little problems that come in our office every day. Thank you so much, especially with. Uh, little things and the confusion about the inspections. Thank you for going time with her. This person you get a comment about the offer, always providing us all the information to keep this confusing. It's been a great job. Thank you. Do oh, you have any comments? Okay. Colin. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Sue. Okay. Melissa, do you? Melissa, do you? Um, um, you asked me on Saturday for your stack of grants. Yep. Five so far. Bad news is most of them have matched parts. So I'm working on getting some that don't have any. Um, a lot of these you guys can apply to next year when I'm not here, sadly. But I'll get you guys set up with that woman at the county to help me start the grant writing oh. process. Excellent. But your homework is to get the projects organized so that she can do the narrative for you. Okay. But I got five so far. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, at this time, we're going to, to break for executive session. So we're going to ask everyone to please vacate. That way we can have the closed door session. And then we'll give a recap at the end of the, the meeting on the Zoom before we close that out. And then uh, prep us about it at the next meeting. Um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, happy, I guess it would be uh, Labor Day this, this upcoming weekend. Happy Labor Day. Um, stay safe. We'll see you next month. Uh, so all recording. Okay, uh, we are back from executive session. The time is now 10.09 p.m. Uh, we were discussing potential legal concerns and litigation matters around the Ballinger Road fill situation. Uh, there will be some follow-up at next month's meeting and potentially another executive session to follow. Uh, at this time, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Again, the time is 10.09 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jim. <laughs>